Do you want to start a business to give your family more freedom? Do you desire to have a marriage that makes your friends jealous? Do you want to spend more quality time with your children? We are your hosts, Matt and Jocelyn Woodruff, and we cannot wait to share this journey with you. Welcome to our family-friendly podcast. Join our conversations where we talk about how to build a business that will give us the freedom we choose. Welcome to the Family Life Movement Podcast. Welcome to the Wrestling with Fatherhood Reloaded Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Woodrum, and I cannot wait for this phenomenal episode. Today, we have Stacy Chalemi. She is on a mission to transform the health of millions of people worldwide. She is a popular and recognizable health and lifestyle reporter and expert, colonist, and health host. She is the author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing and Natural Remedies for Common Conditions, along with 20 other self-published books. She is the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide and recognized health and natural wellness remedies expert with 20 years in practice as a health coach. She writes for the Huff, Huff she writes for the Huffington Post, Huff Post, Thrive Global, and Medium. She has been on the, a guest on the Dr. Oz Show, local news, and numerous radio shows. She focuses on natural healing, herbal remedies, alternate methods, self-motivation, food for medicine, nutrition, fitness, and natural beauty remedies, and the power of positive thinking. Stacy, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So, Stacey, tell us a little bit about your background and your family. Okay. Well, you know, it all started, um, I had developed epilepsy at the age of five. Um, I had struggled throughout my entire life uh, with seizures. And even as I got older, um, I struggled in college. It was really tough, um, you know, those late night studies and the stress of college. And, you know, I was really, I, I said to myself, am I ever going to be able to do this? You know, I really wanted to just have a normal life, you know, quote unquote normal, you know, just like everybody else. And so one day I decided to right to the epilepsy um, organization, the Epilepsy Foundation. And I sent a letter to their magazine and I asked them if they could publish it. And I asked them, how do people cope with epilepsy? How does the millions of people around the world who have this disorder, how do they deal with it? And I asked people to write to me and to share, you know, their experiences and what they do, you know, their tools and techniques. And surprisingly, I got hundreds and hundreds of letters from all over the United States and Canada. People were sharing their stories, sharing what they do, how how they cope with it. And I was just truly amazed. You know, one, I didn't realize so many people had it. You know, like you, you always feel like you're the only one when you have something or you're going through something. And I was just really, I learned so much through those letters. And I ended up, you know, writing a book. Um, it was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And it talked, you know, I had, I had a lot of the letters in there. I talked about tools and techniques that I learned that I, I applied that these people taught me and it helped my life. And I even, you know, one day I opened up my my email box and I got a letter from somebody and she said she was on the verge of suicide. She wanted to, you know, she wanted to commit suicide, but she read my book and she said it inspired her and it really gave her, you know, an inspiration to live. She uses, you know, these tools and techniques and she no longer, you know, has suicidal thoughts. She wants to move, she's moving on with her life and she's happy with who she is. And at that moment, I realized how powerful the words of wisdom are, how, you know, how your words, how your, your inspiration and the things we say to other people can actually affect a person's life, you know, how it could actually improve, inspire and motivate people. And at that point in my life, I really realized that this was direct, the direction I wanted to go in. And so uh, over the years, I had um, written, um, you know, uh, many different books. And I also, I realized that I started working with an herbalist and I started um, doing a lot of research for him. I was researching um, tons of information and some of these things were, you know, applied to me. So I was starting to apply a lot of these things to my life. And, you know, my seizures went from going from, let's say nine a month to six to five to four to three. And I started feeling better. I started feeling healthier. And I was like, wow, you know, if, if, it's if these things are helping me, imagine what it could do to everybody else. 
else. So I started, you know, I, I wrote a book. I wrote actually a 500 page book about all the things I learned, all the research I'd done, you know, how it, you know, all these different things and how they can help people. And I also created a little blog on Blogger. I started out with a blog of 500 people, you know, and it went from, you know, 500 people to, uh, uh, you know, I, I created a website, you know, went to 10,000, then to, went to like over, I had created a website that developed over 500,000 people. So many people were looking for ways to improve their life naturally without having to use a drug or over-counter medication. And, you know, and I saw how, you know, if it was improving my epilepsy in my life, imagine what it could do to others. So all these things really inspired me. I started doing a lot of articles. My husband, who was very supportive, you know, he, he inspired me to continue with this. My, my children were always behind me saying, you know, to, to, you know, help, you know, they were, you know, everybody was, you know, wanted it, wanted to see other people. You know, my family is a very help, help kind of family that, you know, we love, we love to help each other and help others. So this was like a, a very motivational time for, for me and my family. And, you know, and it was such a good feeling to be able to accomplish where, you know, that you're helping people besides yourself, you know, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. Man, I absolutely love that. I love that you were able to take the mindset of going from somebody who struggled and you, you probably identified yourself as somebody who struggled and said you went and you decided to use that as a method into success. Yeah, so talk you know. to us a little bit about that mindset of going from somebody who struggles and had epilepsy and somebody who's you know, probably couldn't think, hey, you know what, I, you know, I'm always going to be somebody who has epilepsy. I can't say it for some reason today, <laughs> but uh, and to somebody who's, wow, I can do this. My words matter. I can change lives by changing my own mindset. You know, it was really hard. My whole life was like a roller coaster ride. You know, every time I felt like I moved two steps forward, I got knocked back two steps. And I never felt like I could get ahead of myself. And I was working for a huge company in, in New York after I graduated from college. And I was, you know, I had the best job you could ever imagine. And, you know, one day I had a seizure. I fell to the floor. Um, and, you know, one of the people, one of the executives walked right over me and kept walking. You know, 30 minutes later, I was released from my, my position. And, you know, I was like, you know, am I ever going to be able to, to be, be a success? Am I ever going to be able to, to be somebody that I could be proud of, you know? And, um, you know, I didn't let it get to me. I said to myself, you know what, I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm not going to let this disorder stop me from living. I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not going to let other people stop me from being a success, you know? So I just moved on and I, you know, I created goals for myself. I created who I, you know, a, an ideal person of who I wanted to be. And I just, you know, moved, moved on. And every time, you know, something knocked me back, I, you know, it was the power of positive thinking that really always brought me back to, you know, being on top. You know, you have to be positive in this world. We all struggle in life. Everybody has a story. Everybody has issues. Everybody struggles with something, but it's how we handle it that matters. Man, I absolutely love that. It sounds like you're a huge proponent of people taking care of themselves. People who, you know, go the extra mile, people who are, you know, understand their own value and, and, and different things like that. So as parents, why is it so important for us to take care of ourselves even before we take care of our kids? I feel it's really important to take care of yourself before we take care of our kids because I feel like if I'm not feeling 100%, if I neglect myself and I start not focusing on myself, then I, I'm not 100% and I can't really care for my kids 100%. I'm not giving them the care that they deserve. I'm not giving them the love and attention and the focus and the, the things they need because me as a person, I, I'm not I'm not, I'm not who I could be. I'm not at my full potential. So I always make sure that I take care of myself, that I try to, I try to care for myself to keep myself 100%. I want to feel good mentally, spiritually, and physically. And I try to do whatever I need to, to, to get myself, you know, as closest to 100% as possible. And when I'm feeling 100%, you know, that energy is going to my kids. My energy rubs off on my kids' energy. I'm a firm believer in energy, you know, and our energy is kind of, like you know rub off on each other so if you're you're next to a positive person and you can feel that positive person right next to you for some reason their energy just like comes into you and you feel really good about yourself 
And you know, that's the same thing with kids. When kids see you at 100%, they see you, you, they see you being your ultimate you, you know, your personality rubs off on them. You're the example. So you really have to be the best you can be because you're, you know, you're teaching their, your kids who they're going to become in the future. I also think that you can give your you can give your kids so much more when you're serving your kids from a full cup. Oh, if your most cup definitely. is only you know halfway full, and you're sitting here and you're giving what little you've got, you're only going to be able to give your kids so much. One hundred percent. When you serve them and when you're being a parent from that full cup, there's so much more that you can give your kids, so much more that you can build them up, so much more that you know our sons and our daughters can understand their value and their self-worth yes so what are some oh i'm sorry, go ahead i was gonna say when you feel good about yourself you're gonna feel good you're gonna give that that positiveness to your children you're gonna say you know you're gonna tell your children how much they're worth how good they are how how everything they do is is is, is awesome if you don't feel good about yourself you, you're not gonna think and, and view your kids, their actions as, as, as worthy. And you're not going to give your kids the boost that they need to become those, those positive, strong individuals in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely love that. So what are some ways as parents, as people who are working nine to five, as people who are parents, as people who you know, are trying to you know, build up businesses, as people who are, you know, we've got so many different things going on in today's world. What are some ways that parents can take care of themselves better physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? You know, a lot of times, you know, um, I find that one meditation is a great thing. Like, and you don't, you know, you can go and you can meditate um, 15 minutes in the day. That helps with getting all the frustration, all the stress out of you. You can, you know, you can sit down on a floor in a quiet room. You can focus on something or close your eyes and then focus on an image in your head. And you do breathing exercises. And these breathing exercises actually help release the stress in your body and release the tension that you're feeling inside you. When you release that tension, you release all those negative emotions that life itself brings on you on a daily basis, you're able to feel better, more focused, more energetic. You're able to be able to focus on your life and you're able to you be able to handle things that you normally might not be able to handle. I also feel like, you know, and a lot of people, you know, um, like to exercise, you know, exercise and you don't have to exercise like a, like a, like a fiend, you know, you know, a little bit of exercise. I say 15 minutes or more, you know, like it depends on what, how much you like to do and what you're capable of doing because not everybody is capable of doing those those you know those long amounts of exercising but if you could exercise for a little bit even take a walk outside you know that helps the body that helps reduce stress that helps make you feel better and it helps your body circulate your blood flow and it and mentally it helps you as well you know and, and those are great things to do too Awesome. So when we start taking our care of ourselves better physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, what does that do to our family, to our marriage, and to our children when we understand our own health? And again, understand our own value. You know, 90% of stress causes, 90% yeah, of our, our illnesses are caused by stress. And when we can take care of ourselves. And we, we're able to feel the love and we're able to feel, be able to get along better with our family. You know, when you're stressed out and you're just not feeling it and you're, you're really, you know, um, you're able, when I feel good about myself and I'm able to reduce the stress in my life and I'm able to, you know, um, take care of myself, I'm able to have a better relationship with my husband. My husband comes home from work, he's stressed out, but you know, I, you know, I, I've been able to do things to make myself feel better as a person. And, you know, do things that I know makes me feel good, makes me feel better mentally and physically. And I'm, when he comes home from work and he's had a hard day, I'm able to, you know, give him the love and attention he needs, you know, and be able to give him everything that's going to help him, you know, and that puts him in a good spot, you know, and my children too, when they come home from school, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling good, I'm stressed out, you know, my kids come home, I'm not going to be giving them the love and attention they need. I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be be angry. I'm going to have anxiety. What's that doing to my children? Have you ever seen an anxious person that has anxiety and stress? How do they 
you know, care for their kids. You know, I, I see a lot of people that have a lot of anxiety and stress and, you know, they, their kids come home and they're, they're, they're not giving their kids the attention they need, you know, and they actually, you could see that the connection is not there. You know, there's so many children and so many um, husbands and wives and, and children and parents that don't have that connection. And I even did a thing on the Huffington Post where Ariana Huffington asked me to make a video with my son and it was about connections with your children. So many times you grew up in the same household, but you don't really know who you think your children are. You have an idea you think it is, but that's not actually who they are. You need to sit down with your children. You need to have quality time. Quality time is so important. You need to talk to your children, understand your children, make your children understand that you are their friend. You are their parent, but you are their friend too. You can come to me. You could talk to me. I'm not going to judge you. I'm here to help you, you know, and, and you, you know, encourage them to talk to you and tell you what's going on in their life because this is the ages when they start growing up, they, they tell you less and less and less and less, you know, and the less you know it is not good because that's when problems occur you know that's when 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 things happen that you know aren't so good so you really want to make the time to always you know you you don't you can't be a stress or anxious person you have to be try to be you know be your best to try to reduce your stress and tension and have connections with your children do things with your children you know we always make it a thing in our home where we make the weekends and my husband you know he works a lot of hours and I work a lot of hours too but we always make sure that the weekends are spent with our children and we're always doing special things we try to do as much as possible with the children you know we take care of ourselves we have quality time between the two of us we do things as a, as a husband and wife but yet we do things as a family and you know and we you have to you kind of have to like it's like a kind of toss in a ball you have to, you have to have a variety of things you have to have quality time with your husband and wife you have to have quality time with your children you have to and teach your children family values what family means and the importance of loving each other and have and 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 being close to each other and really understand who your kids are well that's such a powerful concept and i love this idea that you're talking about we've talked about it on the show before but it's meeting your kids where they're at and continuing to build up that relationship, not losing track of who your kids are, making sure you understand who they are physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and building up that relationship so that you can still have a powerful, impactful relationship throughout the teen years. Yeah, you know, there's so many things going on in this world, and it, and you know, as the generations change, you know, you, there's there's things that you know, we I, it's so funny because I heard my parents, you know, growing up, and I heard other people saying, you know, like, you know, they they weren't aware. It's like the, the the way kids do things and the things they do are similar yet very different. You know, like they do things that we haven't done. You know, like. But, you know, like, um, you know, suicide is a huge thing. You know, like I was doing a lot of work with a lot of people. And, you know, until I did work with organizations, I didn't realize how high the suicide rate is with children. Um, there is a lot of suicide going on. There is a lot of drug overdoses, you know, and, and you know, not by purpose. They're trying things that, you know, and, and drugs and they're mixing things, you know, that other kids are doing, that they're seeing, that other kids do. And, you know, you want to be there to help your children if your children aren't feeling good about themselves you want to be there to go over how they're feeling and you want to show them the ways that they can improve you know their thoughts their feelings their life you know and you want to make sure that you you can tell them that you love them no matter what who they are no matter what and you're here to help them get out of this and you know and if kids are doing drugs you know you don't want to condemn them you want to you want to get to the root why are they doing it? Is there is it because they're trying to cope with an issue they're they're dealing with with their friends? Is it because they're they're just following their friends' actions? You want to make them a stronger person. You want to make them a leader, not a follower. You know, so you don't want to yell and scream at your children. You want to be able to connect with your children and get them out of these problems. You know, and you if your child that you can see your child is just a normal kid, but yet they like to follow in the footsteps of other kids. You want to try to show them leadership qualities and show them, you know to be proud of who they are and be the person they want to be and not worry about, you know, being like everybody else, you know, to be their own person. So you really want to take notice to your children as best as you can, have conversations with your children and really, you know, do the best you can to, to help your children as they grow up in these, you know, tough times. Absolutely love that. 
Thank you for listening to the Family Life Movement Podcast. I hope you had as much fun as we did. To hear our thoughts on the podcast and to continue this conversation, join our free Facebook group by searching for the Family Life Movement. See the show notes for links to our guest social media and websites and any resources that were mentioned will also be linked in the show notes. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please go rate and review and send us a screenshot and we will send you a special access gift. Join us next time for more conversations, tips, and tricks on growing your business around your family. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.